going you guys? Welcome back to another day in the helicopter. Cruising in an R66 today. It's an awesome flight, beautiful weather. Um, this helicopter specifically that I'm flying right now, I don't get to fly it very often. It's usually once a year that I, uh, I fly this helicopter. Um, it's for a private customer that we do as maintenance. And um, it's kind of a fun flight because uh, I usually ferry him back and forth uh, over to where his uh, airport is, drop him off and then fly home. And uh, so it's kind of a fun opportunity. But the interesting thing is, uh, nobody in the back seat, and right now, nobody in the passenger seat either. Which is weird because I'm actually not flying. That's weird because the autopilot is flying. So uh, this is kind of an unusual thing because we don't really have um, any of our helicopters that have autopilot, and so you can see. Uh, full glass cockpit with the uh, Genesis Helisas system in here, which is pretty cool because, again, like I said, I don't really get to fly this very often, and so right now, as you can see, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm prepared to, to help the helicopter out if it needs to, but right now it's just flying direct to um, Abbotsford Airport, it's holding a heading, and uh, in this case it's holding an altitude. So, I've got the collective set in that 70% uh, right here, and so we're just kind of cruising along, doing about 104, 103 knots right now. So the interesting thing is, so the Genesis Helisas is a two-axis autopilot, okay? Um, so what's the difference between a two-axis and a four-axis autopilot? Well, the two-axis autopilot just has an actuator only on this cyclic control right here. So what does that mean? That means that you can hold, uh, it's obviously holds stabilization, so as you can see out the window right now, it's holding the helicopter nice and stable. And then it holds a heading, obviously, because whatever you have set the cyclic to now, it's just going to hold that heading. Or if you actually want it to, you can you know, plug in your route and it'll actually uh, fly that route for you, which is kind of cool. And then it'll hold either an airspeed or an altitude. So one or the other, because it has no control of this collective here, so it can't actually control your power setting, therefore it can't control heading and altitude. So now if you were to add a four-axis autopilot, then that would put an actuator on all three controls. So you'd have one on the cyclic, on the collective, and on the pedals. And then that would mean that you could do what I just said, but you could do heading, sorry, uh, airspeed and altitude. So that's kind of the one differentiator between the two-axis and the four-axis autopilot. Now, the cool thing with a four-axis autopilot is that in the future, as you know, technology and, and things increase and, and get better and better, you're gonna be able to do more and more things with that four-axis autopilot. Now, they're already doing it with uh, more advanced helicopters, much larger helicopters with bigger four-axis autopilots. Um, they're doing it, uh, obviously, in airplanes now for a very long time. So um, they're doing it in unmanned helicopters uh, as they're, they're practicing with unmanned helicopters and stuff like that right now. So it's being done, but as a civilian helicopter, particularly in a light helicopter like this, the things that you can do right now would be auto hover, auto take off and land, or uh, direct to nearest airport and, and land there. So those types of functionalities are things that are going to be possible in future helicopters in this category, in the, the light category. So um, I find that really exciting. I always find it very interesting and unnerving um, hopping in this thing popping on the autopilot because I never fly with it. But what's interesting, I think what's weird is within a very short amount of time, you actually get quite comfortable with it. You know, I remember the first time I flew with it, I, I think I posted that video for you guys. Within five minutes, I was taking my hands off the controls and thinking, wow, it's actually flying for me. And, you know, the longer that you do it, the more comfortable you get. And right now, you know, just uh, talking to you guys for the last few minutes here, you can actually see that uh, I still haven't had to do anything. It's a pretty calm day, so it's holding it nice and stable for us. But um, I haven't really had to do anything here, and the helicopter's just flying where I need it to fly. We're still totally on track here, and uh, flying direct to the nearest uh, airport, which uh, was Abbotsford, which is where we're, we're going. So, um, pretty neat stuff. I mean, there's so much glass here. Um, there's so many things, redundancies and stuff like that uh, for this, this glass instrument stuff that I think on a VFR helicopter might be a little bit overkill. It's just my personal opinion. Um, but anyways, it's kind of cool. We've got uh, double stacked radios. So we've got a radio in the GPS right there, uh, another radio there, and then we've got the transponder down there and then 
the comp box. This is, this is definitely a, a really nice Robinson R66. This is kind of the top tier of what you can get in uh, in this class of helicopters. So it's really nice. I'm just going to do a quick radio call here and see if I can get clearance across the runway. Entire Zulu Bravo, Bravo, just coming up a couple miles back here now. So Bravo, Bravo, Roger, continue eastbound not below 1,000 feet. Plan to fly directly over the uh, control tower. Okay, I'll go directly over this control tower at 1,000 feet for Zulu Bravo, Bravo, just on the other side. Zulu Bravo, Bravo, for any once you cross runway 19, you'll land BCL, come to your discretion. Okay, cleared across 19 at 1,000 feet, and then descend on the other side for landing Zulu Bravo, Bravo. Awesome. So this is um, pretty cool. I thought I'd bring you guys along for this little journey here. So what we're going to do... Um, we'll see actually where the autopilot takes us. I think it'll take us exactly where we need to go here across the midfield, and then um, and then I'll take control again and actually shoot the approach and landing. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, couple minute little little flight here. Incredible. We haven't actually got the smoke yet. As you can see here, we got still really nice blue sky. There's the rest of British Columbia is just on fire, burning. You can see a bit of haze there, but nothing too crazy. So, anyways, I got to do some actual flying now. I've got to go land this helicopter, but hope you guys enjoyed this little video. If you did, give it a thumbs up as always. We're going to talk to you guys on the next one. Hopefully, now you understand the difference between a two axis and a four axis autopilot. See ya. Altitude, get rid of airspeed, got a long ways to go, and a short time to get there. Terrain. Terrain. Warning. Terrain. Terrain. Warning. Caution. Terrain. Terrain. I got it. I'm a VFR pilot. I can see out the window. I know there's trees and power lines in there. I don't know if I was a cloud on the other hand. That would be terrifying. To the mic, Joy, at number three, fall up on Mama Hat. In your sir, Golf, as you uh, approach the Trans Canada Highway in the right turn at westbound, stay north of the uh, highway. There'll be 737 departing runaway 07. In your sir, Golf, there. And we are down.